We started this learning sequence thinking about how we could get electricity from a magnetic field, and that's what led Faraday to discover his law of induction. But now let's look at the actual device at an electric generator. And there are many kinds of amazingly complicated electric generators. We're going to imagine the simplest one. So here are the poles of a magnet. They're sitting there just to give us a nice uniform, well, it wouldn't be perfectly uniform, but some magnetic field in between B. So we have a B field in this gap in the magnet. And inside, we put um, a coil of wire that we can rotate. So this is um, a wire loop. And it can spin about this axis. So as it spins, its area vector, A, will rotate in between the two magnets, so the vector A will rotate with respect to the magnetic field direction of B. So if we uh, rotate the loop in a uniform B, then we know we will get um, a D phi B dt. The magnetic flux through the loop will change in time, so therefore we'll get an EMF. So this is how you can induce an EMF in a circuit, if this went on to a circuit, by rotating a wire loop. So let's look at what we would get. So we know, in this case, if the B field is uniform and there's the A vector, that the magnetic flux through the loop would depend on that angle theta. We know it would basically be B, uh, the magnetic field B, if it were uniform, times the area of the loop times cosine of that angle. So for uniform rotation, um, theta is omega t. That just means we spin at some frequency omega. If you want to think of it in terms of hertz, it's 2 pi times the frequency f times the time. So all we got to do is plug that into theta, and we get the flux as a function of time, b a cosine omega t. And that's good. It can go positive and negative. As the cosine goes positive and negative, the A vector can be along the B field. The A vector can point opposite of the B field. Everything makes sense. <clears throat> now let's use Faraday's law and write down the EMF we're going to get. So we know it's always negative, Lenz's law. We usually put an N here if it has N loops, right? So maybe it's actually going around N times wire loops in. I just drew one, but you could have drawn uh, many loops. And then it's d phi b dt. So let's see what that is. That's minus n. And the derivative of this with respect to time is derivative of cosine is negative sine. And, um, and we pull out an omega. So it's b a omega sine omega t. So that's our EMF. And then you see that this is an AC EMF. This is an alternating current. Which we know as AC. And soon we'll have an entire learning sequence on AC circuits. But this inherently gives you an AC, an oscillating um, EMF. You never get a DC EMF out of a simple generator like this. So let's look at one and see if that's really what happens. So here is a very old model of one of these. This may be so old, it may be closer to Faraday than we are to when this was made, I'm not sure. But it is a loop here. And we don't have a giant uniform magnetic field, but we do have a magnetic field. So this is one half of what used to be a nice little horseshoe magnet. So this one is creating magnetic field sticking out and sticking into the loop. So we have a field through the loop. I'm going to rotate this thing. And the EMF induced is going to the oscilloscope. So as we watch, I'll rotate it kind of slowly. As we watch, we are changing the flux. Here, we have a large flux. When we're like this, we have zero flux. <clears throat> so as I rotate it, I'll try to rotate it uniform. 
we'll get a varying flux through the loop, so we should induce an EMF. So what you can see on the oscilloscope is sort of a positive high voltage, and then it goes negative, and then it goes positive, and then it goes negative. And it's switching because we have some area vector on the loop. We can define it one way or the other, but it's, it's one way or the other. So in one uh, direction, the change, the area is going into the field, the other it's going against the field. That's why you get positive and negative. If I spin it faster, you'll get a bigger effect. It'll come together more. You're seeing really sharp spikes. That's because these always require, when something is spinning, and then you have to have electrodes on it, there always has to be some contact. There always have to be these brushes for this kind of a setup, and those lead to those spikes. So don't worry about the spikes. But there you can clearly see the EMF forming that we've been talking about. And you can see it's not a perfect sinusoid as we describe here, but that's because this setup is not, not ideal. What do you do with it? So we've made an EMF, who cares? What we really want to do is use this to really drive power in something. You want to put a load on it and make it, make it into a, a real device. And that's, here's some, an example of that here. Some clever person, uh, I found this in the demo room, has taken a pencil sharpener and somehow used the inner, stuck a magnet on it and used the inner workings to generate an EMF and then hook that up to a light bulb. So here you can see, as I turn the pencil sharpener, the light bulb lights up. And you can even see that it's AC. You can see the little filament flashing with some frequency. And the faster I go, the more power we generate. OK, so now let's look a little more mathematically about that, at the power and how much we can expect to get out of the generator like this.